Good morning, young ladies. Good morning. So, you know, one of the best things that God does is God forgives us. If we do something that we're not supposed to, if we do something kind of naughty, if we do something that God has said, you should not to do that, if we ask God to forgive us, God will. Do you know how many times? Seven times? Seventy-seven times? How about a billion times? Maybe even, I hope a billion times, because I probably need that many. God forgives us a lot. So we should probably forgive other people too, right? So... If your little sister takes a lick of your ice cream cones, should you forgive her? That's a tough one. That's a th ice cream cones are important. But, but yeah, we should probably forgive her. If she says, oh, I thought that was my ice cream cone, I'm sorry, we should forgive her. What if she does it seven times? Yeah, we should even forgive her seven times or 77 times, maybe even a billion times. Because that's the way it works. Since God forgives us so much, we should forgive each other too. <clears throat> kind of cool? Kind of cool. Amen. Thank you.
First reading comes from uh, Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21. After Jacob's death, the brothers of Joseph begged for forgiveness for the crime they had done against him. You intended to do me harm, Joseph said, but God used this as an opportunity to do good and save many lives. The reading begins. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his bro brothers also wept fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. We will read the psalm uh, responsively. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the grave? and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. O oh Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all the workers. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. O oh Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You will not always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor have us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have they removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so have, so you have compassion for those who fear you, O Lord. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. This Christian community has significant struggles with diversity. Here Paul helps us understand that despite different practices in worship and personal piety, we do not judge one another. All Christians belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for all of us and will judge each of us. The reading begins. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. 
while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow down to, bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. Reading of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. When Peter asks about the limits of forgiveness, Jesus responds with a parable that suggests human forgiveness should mirror the unlimited mercy of God. The lesson begins. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience me, patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who Old, owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, pay me what you owe. Then this fellow fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I have had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will do also to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. How many times should I forgive another member of the church? As many as seven times? Not seven times, I tell you, but 77 times. So my heavenly Father will do also to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. I read a commentator this week who said that for him, forgiveness was the most difficult of all the commandments. And I would venture to say that that's probably true for many, if not most of us, 
like the slave in Jesus' parable, we have been forgiven so very much, and we are. We are called and commanded to forgive one another. But forgiveness can be so very hard. The commentator went on to tell a story of a particular case where forgiveness had been so difficult for him. He and his family are from Cambodia, and he had lived through the war there. A couple of years ago, he read in the paper that one of the members of the Khmer Rouge had died in pr prison. It's been a few years now, but you may remember what a ruthless and violent regime the Khmer Rouge was, killing truly millions of Cambodians during their reign. One of the leaders of the Khmer Rouge was a man named Kang Kek Yu. He had been the commander of a prison camp and by his own records had tortured and killed 15,000 people. Dr. Kaufman described his struggles to forgive this man who had done such evil to his friends and his family and his country. Those difficulties were made all the worse because this terrible man before his arrest and conviction had been converted. He had been baptized and became a Christian and asked those that he had harmed to forgive him. How much should I forgive, Dr. Kaufman asked. As many as 15,000 times? Forgiveness is hard. It's hard when the crimes and sins are huge ones like those of the Khmer Rouge. But it's also hard when the sins and hurts are less dramatic. Forgiveness isn't something that comes naturally to us. It isn't something that we do out of instinct or habit. Forgiveness truly does come from our hearts. It is an act of love. In fact, I would be willing to say that our ability to forgive one another is a gift from God, a gift of faith. Forgiveness is a miracle that God does amongst us. And yet, forgiveness is indeed central to our lives as Christians. Jesus' death and resurrection were done so that we might have forgiveness of sins. And through that forgiveness, eternal life. That's who we are. We are the forgiven ones. We are the forgiven ones who forgive one another. That forgiveness, it is a gift of life, both for the forgiven and for the forgiver. When we forgive one another, both of us, the one who is forgiven and the one doing the forgiven, forgiving, are set free from the hold that sin has over us. Broken relationships are restored. Broken lives are mended. Broken hearts begin to heal. Forgiveness is hard, though. Nothing in our world works that way. Everything tells, uh, around us tells us that we should remember and count every slight, every hurt, every harsh word, every dishonest deal. The world we live in is about keeping score and getting even, if not getting just a little bit ahead. Forgiveness is hard. It makes us vulnerable. It asks us to see beyond the hurt that has been done to us, to see the person that God 
love so much that he would die for them. And forgiveness is hard as well because it often requires that we look at ourselves, our own failings and shortcomings, our own need to be forgiven. Forgiveness demands that we come to terms with just how much God has forgiven us. Forgiveness is hard, but forgiveness truly is the way of life. Eli and Owen did not like each other very much, which was a problem because Eli was Owen's son-in-law. And the problem, it was skin deep. You see, Owen and his daughter are white, and Eli is black. Now, I have to tell you, Owen is a fine man. He loved his family and loved his God with all his heart. He lived a wholesome and, uns and upstanding life. And honestly, he seemed to me to be one of the least re racist people I have ever known. But the idea of an interracial marriage with all of the differences in culture and lifestyle that he imagined that would bring, it was just too much for him. Owen didn't treat Eli very well for the first years of those marriage. And Eli was a proud man who didn't take insults and slights very well, and he responded in kind. Could have been a terrible situation. But then something happened. Owen's daughter got pregnant, and she had two beautiful baby girls. And while Owen had a hard time accepting Eli, he immediately fell in love with those two little babies. Out of the blue, one day, Eli came to his father-in-law and told him, Owen, I forgive you. Please forgive me. Owen was stunned. And then he was ashamed and then he fell in love with that young man who had made his daughter happy and had, who had given him those two beautiful granddaughters and one of the best, most beautiful friendships I have ever known was born. Forgiveness is hard, but in it is life. That is our calling and our command, to love one another, to forgive one another, to forgive one another as God has forgiven us. 77 times, 15,000 times, forgive one another from your hearts. It's hard, but in that, is the life of God. Amen. Amen.